Han organizes a government system. China was a divided country at the end of the Qin Dynasty, but it was reunited again by the Han Dynasty, 202 BC. Emperor Gao Zhu, Liu Bang, united China after defeating the last rebellion led by Shang Yu of the insurgent Chu state and adopted a system of commandery and princedom, which was a mix of commandery and feudal systems. Under this system, strategic military posts and capital areas were under the direct command of the emperor, while the rest were under regional rulers. The Han Dynasty became a great power and reached its peak during the reign of the Emperor Wu of Han. He was able to build a strong and centralized state thanks to the commandery county system that covered the entire territory. He also launched conquest campaigns and defeated Nanyu and Old Joseon and went on to invade Central Asia as well as the northern Xiangnu barbarians. When the significant cost of repeated wars drained the national revenue, Emperor Wu controlled the economy through the standardization of the transport system and the price of goods via special regulations. He also had the state monopolize the production, transport, and sale of salt and iron. What kind of system did Emperor Wu introduce to expand finances? Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty. Since the war with the Xiangnu and other barbarians is constant, the following policies will be implemented to expand the national finances. After the state collects local specialties as tax, the state will sell them to other regions to help with distribution and make profits. In addition, when prices are low, the state will adjust prices by buying goods in the country and selling them when they are higher. In addition, the state will monopolize the sale of salt and iron to generate profit. Han unifies diverse ethnic groups and cultures while fighting against the Xiongnu tribe. The Han Dynasty was constantly raided by northern nomadic people called the Xiongnu tribe. After building a military force that surpassed the Xiongnu tribe, Emperor Wu waged war with them and drove them beyond the Gobi Desert, if only temporarily. Before the war with the Xiongnu, Emperor Wu dispatched Zhang Shan to the western regions to build an alliance with the Yu Zhi against the Xiongnu. During this journey, a road that connected Han and the western regions was established. Later on, the cultures of the east and the west were exchanged through this road and the silk made in Han was introduced to Rome, thereby giving it the name the Silk Road. Founded upon the Confucian governing principles and a value system called Hua Yi Guan, literally Chinese superior, others inferior. Han applied the tributary system and title conference system on its quest to unify surrounding tribes and their cultures. Being rather a matter of formality only, the surrounding tributary states accepted them without much resistance. However, Han turned to force to deal directly with the tributary states that refused to follow these diplomatic formalities. How was the Silk Road established? Zhang Chen went to the western regions to form an alliance with Yu Zhe. But Yu Zhe did not wish an alliance to attack Xiang Nu. Instead, Zhang Chen returned to the Han Dynasty with supplies and information from the western regions. Seeing this, Emperor Wu became interested in the western regions and tried to exchange with them. As a result, a new trade route, the Silk Road, was opened. The Yellow Turban Rebellion brings down the Han Dynasty. The royal authority of the kings that succeeded Emperor Wu grew weak because consort king and eunuchs started getting their hands into politics. Eventually, a consort kin named Wang Mang 
seized the throne and founded the Xin Dynasty. However, the Xin Dynasty soon perished, and after that, Guangwu revived Han to become what is called the Later Han Dynasty. Towards the end of the Later Han Dynasty, the power struggle among the consort kin and eunuchs intensified because the succeeding kings took the throne at very young ages. While the central government's power grew weak as a result of deepening political chaos, powerful local landowners started growing their influence. Life became harder for peasants because of the tyranny and exploitation of the powerful landowners. Eventually, the situation led to numerous revolts by peasants, including the Yellow Turban Rebellion, 184, while the power struggle among local landowners continued until the later Han Dynasty was overthrown, 220. Did the Yellow Turban Rebellion contribute to the founding of the Three Kingdoms, Wei, Shu, Wu? The later Han was a state run by a coalition of wealthy landowners, where the emperor was just a figurehead, and the farmers were exploited by the landowners. At the time, the founding leader of the Way of the Great Peace, Zhang Zhui, united his followers and peasants to incite the Yellow Turban Rebellion. The central government ordered local landowners to crack down on the rebels, and it was during this time that Cao Cao, Liu Bei, and Sun Jian emerged as warlords. Then came the rebellion by the Ten Attendants, the Ten Eunuchs. By then, the power of the Han Dynasty was already declining, and wars broke out to occupy the land. Their stories are written in the Chinese classic, Romance of the Three Kingdoms by Luo Guanchong. Confucianism becomes the main political ideology and foundation of Chinese culture. Confucianism was suppressed by the first emperor of the Qin Dynasty, Qin Shi Huang, but it advanced greatly during the Han Dynasty. At the proposal of a Confucian scholar named Dong Zhongshu, Emperor Wu acknowledged Confucianism as the dominant political ideology of the Han Dynasty. In addition, an imperial academy dedicated to Confucian learning called the Taixu was established in the capital city of Chang'an, where a program called Erudite of the Five Classics was introduced. After having experienced the burning of books and burying of scholars incident during the Qin Dynasty, a textual exegesis, currently called philology, was developed during the Han Dynasty to decipher the meaning of Confucian texts and analyze them. The advancement in academic studies and scientific technology during the Han Dynasty laid the groundwork for traditional Chinese culture to flourish. A Chinese historian of the early Han Dynasty named Sima Chan penned the records of the Grand Historian. He wrote this book in the Ji Zhuan Ti style, which was about presenting history in a series of biographies. This style became the standard for writing history books later on. Production of paper was made easy during this period after Kai Lun invented modern paper and advanced the papermaking process. In the past, they left written records on bamboo poles, wooden tablets, or silk. But these were expensive and not widely available. Development in science and technology also resulted in the invention of the sundial and the world's first seismograph. Invented by Zhang Heng, the seismograph, named the Di Dong Yi, made it possible to measure the movements of the Earth. What kind of book is Sima Chen's The Records of the Grand Historian? The Records of the Grand Historian is a book written about the history of the successive dynasties of China and surrounding countries on everything from the myths to the Emperor Wu of the Han Dynasty. It consists of the basic annals, which deals with the emperor's achievements, the hereditary houses, which deals with the biography of feudal lords, and monographs, which deals with institutions and cultures, and biographs, 
which deals with famous people in each field. This configuration method is called Zhi Huan Ti style.